This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 539 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by EquestrianCollections.com. Hi, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is from Dr. Wendy Ying. Dr. Ying is co-host with Glenn the Geek of the Driving Radio Show right here on the Horse Radio Network, as well as a competition four-in-hand driver. Plus, she's a veterinarian that practices traditional Chinese medicine. Today's tip is the bladder meridian. But first, a word from today's sponsor, equestriancollections.com. Autumn is here. Time to cash in on Mother Nature's horse-friendly weather and take to the saddle with renewed enthusiasm. In so doing, you'll likely notice a few gaps in you and your horse's fall wardrobes. That turnout sheet that's seen its last roll in the pasture... The fleece vest that is well past vintage and moving swiftly towards ratty. EquestrianCollections.com has what you and your horse need, plus the latest just-can't-live-without fashions for fall. Visit EquestrianCollections.com today for fresh, fashionable, and functional items for your horse. Now, enjoy today's tip. Right, so today I'm talking about the water element and the... Water element has two meridians associated with it. And uh, each element has meridians associated with it. And just like they, they have a yin and a yang meridian. So they're paired meridians. So there's a bladder meridian. Right, I have a quick question. What? Is it yin and yang or yin and yang? You can say it either way. Okay. Is it the <laughs> same thing? Same thing. Okay. It's spelled the same. Okay. Um, and so the bladder meridian is paired with a kidney meridian. And those are associated with the water element and... Makes the, sense. <laughs> yeah. And the organs they're associated with are the bladder and the kidney. <laughs> so this is why I'm starting with this one. This is a good one to it's start with. It's easy to understand. Easy to <laughs> understand. So um, the bladder meridian follows along from the head. It starts at like the, uh, the inside corner of the eye, runs over the top of the head, like down on, along either side of the spine. Okay, so it runs down there, goes over the hindquarters, squiggles around, and then goes down and ends at the, at the bottom outside of the hind foot. And then the kidney meridian starts at the, um, like in between the two heel bulbs, and then runs inside, along the inside of the leg, and then runs along the ventral midline. So, so the bladder runs on the top and the kidney run, runs on the bottom. So the reason I'm talking about the bladder meridian today for the first one is because usually when the fir- first people's first um, introduction to acupuncture with horses especially is for back pain, right? Because they're like, oh, well, I don't know. We don't know what's wrong. What's right. acupuncture? Right. So um, the reason that it helps with back pain is because it runs along the apaxial muscles of the back, it runs along the neck, it runs along the hind end, like all the problem, all the places the horses have issues. So whenever I treat a horse, there's never a time where I don't treat the bladder meridian. So it's really, really powerful. So treating anything on the bladder meridian, I can use local points, like say they're sore in their lumbar region or their back. I can use those points to relax the muscles locally, um, but also. Now, the, can you do? Do you do acupuncture along the meridian? Is that the idea? Yeah, there's okay. points like the, the. Imagine the meridian is like a river, and the energy flows on the river, but there are little places on the river where you can, like little dams on the river where you can increase the flow. So if something happens the dam, the doors are closed and the energy can't flow. So you need to change that. And it might be closed because, um, you know, you have a big muscle spasm there. Or, you know, their vertebrae is out of whack. Or something like that. But um, one of the other things is for the, for the bladder meridian, it's a little bit easier for, for Western minds to understand because the points on the bladder meridian are associated with... Um, 
the nerves that come out of the spinal cord. So, you know, in between each vertebrae, there are spinal nerves that come out. And those nerves are for sensation. And then they also control your muscles. And then they can also control your visceral organs. So uh, that's why if you have like a pinched nerve, like sciatica is a pinched nerve where the um, nerve is coming out of the spinal cord and you feel it in your leg. Or sometimes you have a pinched nerve somewhere where your vertebrae is out of whack and you feel like a numbness on part of your skin. So when you work on the bladder meridian, you work on these points that are affecting the spinal nerves where they're coming out of the spinal cord. And I'm not saying my needle's touching those nerves, right. okay? But I'm saying I'm, I'm using the energy there to stimulate more circulation and decrease swelling in that area because the swelling there could squeeze the nerve and then it can't fire as well. So that's why chiropractic and acupuncture on the bla- like chiropractic works on the, sp- on the vertebrae of the spine and acupuncture can work on releasing the muscles that are causing the spinal misalignment or the inflammation in the nerve area. So that can actually affect not just muscles, but internal organs. So when I work on a mare that has like a horrible cycling problem, like bitchy mare syndrome, then I always work on the bladder meridian. And also the, the bladder meridian and kidney also run through the hawk. So I can work on points Like, say I don't want to work right on the hawk. I can work on points above it and below it to relieve pain in the hawk. Because we know that when you have hawk pain, you have compensation. Right, right. So. Well, terrific. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Indeed, it is interesting stuff. To listen to all of Wendy's tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and go to the experts drop-down menu on the left. All of our experts are there, alphabetized, and easy to find. You can also go to Wendy's website, 5elementsforanimals.com. If you just can't get enough of Wendy and Glenn, you can listen to them every week right here on the Horse Radio Network at the Driving Radio Show. Head on over to drivingradioshow.com. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover. You can subscribe to all of the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or MP3 player. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse! The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.